Hey, this is Andrew Brown from Exam Pro, and in this video, we're just going to take a peek into Vertex AI. Um, I just like doing this because at some point, you know, maybe your company or you, or you might be considering to do a little bit of ML, okay? Uh, and the thing is, a lot of people are scared of it, and they're really worried about it being extremely expensive. And so this is kind of my way of just kind of getting your toes uh, toes uh, uh, into the pool um, so you're not too afraid to do it. So we'll go ahead here and type in Vertex AI. That is GCP's offering. And we'll go ahead and just enable it. And I wonder if I can do it in Canada. I always like to pick Canada if I can. Montreal. Be nice if it was Toronto. They just don't have data. I mean, they have data centers there, but there's never data centers for the main providers there. And so uh, we chose our region, okay? And I just want to do anything, like opening a notebook. That's usually uh, what we would uh, want to do. But what I really want to show you is about compute because that is the, the hidden cost uh, to any type, whether it's SageMaker, um, uh, Azure uh, ML Studio or uh, Data Studio, ML Studio, can't remember off the top of my head what's called, Vertex AI. It's just that you have to remember to turn off the servers. If you remember that, uh, it's very uh, not scary to use um, uh, these services. So if we want to uh, have a notebook, so migrate your notebook, I don't have any right now, but I just want to run anything. So we'll go ahead and create ourselves a new instance. And so here, uh, just like all the other ones, you have to choose your environment. CUDA or GPUs you do not want to touch because those are super, super expensive. So we will just choose Python 3. Notice it comes with scikit-learn, pandas, and more. That's usually the safest one uh, here. If you look here, it'll tell us what it's spinning up. So four C vCPUs, 15 gigabytes of RAM, 100 gigabytes standard. So it's pretty darn large, but that's pretty standard for uh, what you'd want to use. Um, so what we'll do is go ahead and hit create. Actually, let's go take a look at advanced options. I've never clicked that before. Um, no, nope, nothing exciting there. So we'll go ahead and hit create. Notice this is $102 a month. So you, if you're afraid to run this, don't do it. But I mean, we're gonna turn it on or turn it off. So it's like not gonna cost us much, right? Um, so I'll go ahead and spin that up there. Okay. And I'm not sure how fast this is gonna uh, start up. Uh, on AWS, they have like ones that will start up within one or two minutes. Um, but I don't think that's something that is offered on GCP or, or uh, Azure. So the green usually means it's running, setting up the proxy to Jupyter Lab. So this is what we really want to do is we want to open up Jupyter Lab. So we'll just have to wait a little while until that's ready, okay? So I'll see you back here in a moment. All right, so after waiting a very short while there, now we can see we have this open Jupyter Lab. So we'll go ahead and click that. Uh, and that will give us our Jupyter Lab environment. This is just an IDE specialized for data scientists or people working in the data field. Notice that it comes preloaded with tutorials, which is pretty nice. Um, so we have some BigQuery, Cloud ML Engine, fairing, storage. Um, if we go in here, this would show us how to work with BigQuery pragmatically. And the idea here is you go ahead and you just hit play on these, okay? Uh, and the idea is you, if you hit play, I'm not too afraid of doing this. If you want to just watch, that's totally fine as well. But uh, here it says locations are required, et cetera, et cetera. So that ran. Um, and so here, this would just query some public data set. So that's something we did when we did BigQuery. We just uh, ran a query there, but if we hit run, it should output the results. Notice there's an asterisk. It just means that it's running. So we'll give it a bit of time. And so there is its data. So this is pretty, um, you know, this is pretty, uh, uh, you know, pretty straightforward. Um, and very similar experience to the other providers there. So once you learn one, you kind of learn them all. Uh, but yeah, the real thing that you gotta be a bit fearful of is the fact that, uh, you know, depending on the machine type you choose, they get really expensive. So what you can do, I'm just gonna check if they have them on the left-hand side here. Sometimes the providers will have uh, like a category just for compute, but when you're actually in Jupyter Labs, you can go over here. Um, oh, it shows the kernel session. If you're on, um, uh, AWS, they would actually show you the compute here that you can shut it down. But what we can do is if we're really concerned about it, we just go here and stop stop the instance, okay? But the thing is, is that you could also be paying for storage, so that could be kind of expensive. So I'll actually just go ahead and delete it. But we have to stop, I think, the instance before we can go ahead and delete it. So uh, we'll give this a refresh here, okay? 
And while that's going, I just want to show you something else. Actually, I really like this channel called ByCloud because uh, they cover a lot of different kind of AI techniques. But the reason I'm bringing it here is not to promote this channel, but more so because they'd like to link in these Google Collab files. And so Google Collab is kind of a way of um, utilizing, uh, it's kind of, it's, it's like a notebook. It's a like a Jupyter notebook. Uh, or it might, may be a Jupyter notebook. It just doesn't look one-to-one -one with the Jupyter Labs notebook. But um, it allows you to uh, run ML models, uh, but also to utilize GPUs. And GPUs, uh, like your graphics cards, are really, really expensive in the cloud. And so this is an opportunity where you can use it for free and you're just sharing it with other people. And it's one of Google's initiatives to allow you to learn in a cost-free way with Google. And I think it's really cool. Uh, but you can just click through this stuff and kind of get a result. So I can go here and hit uh, run. I'll just say run anyway, that's totally fine with that. Okay. And I, I could just say run all like that. And this is not gonna cost me anything. Like I, I do not have to worry about it. So that's something that's really nice that Google lets you do. I assume it's uh, using underutilized machines or uh, machines that aren't being in use. So if you are learning, you could just, you know, use Google Collab. Uh, but if you uh, if you need to use or you need to build a real model to deploy, uh, then you're going to be doing that with Jupyter Labs and Vertex AI. Okay, so I'm going to see if that is finished uh, shutting down yet. Is it done? No, it's pending. <laughs> uh, I'm going to shut that down. Maybe that was causing the issue there. Okay, so I'll wait till it gets out of the pending state here. Um, and this is just running. I don't know if this is even going to do. Uh, execute a 3D uh, photo in painting. It's going to do something cool, something relating uh, relating to uh, um, something to change poses for people, okay? But anyway, um, I'll see you back here in a moment when this is out of painting, okay? All right, so just as I stopped the video, it, it, uh, it also stopped the instance. So now I can go ahead and delete it. We'll just say, uh, say delete. Okay, and that should take care of uh, any lingering costs, just in case you're following along and you do not want to get billed $100 by the end of the month. There probably was instances that were a bit cheaper that we could have chose. Um, like you don't have to do this. I'm just kind of taking a look here. So there probably was, yeah. So we could have we could have chose something like this. Notice that was $29. That would have been a lot safer to do. Because um, when I think of like SageMaker and, and uh, Azure's uh, uh, ML Studio or Studio, this is usually the cost that I run my notebooks at. So probably just had a very expensive default and we just had to change it down below to this, okay? Um, I figured that was probably the case, but I should have uh, showed you that as we're doing it. So you're not super scared. So really the real cost would be $30. And you can do a lot with that. But again, you can use Google Cloud for free. But there you go. That's it.